Hi, welcome to our first video on protein synthesis. This video is going to look at the process of transcription, which is the first step by which the instructions in DNA are converted into the sequence information necessary to build proteins. Let's take a moment and remind ourselves of how DNA works in cells. The information in DNA can be copied, and that's known as DNA replication, or it can be used to produce proteins. That's referred to as protein synthesis or gene expression. And it's the first arrow in that process, going from DNA to RNA, that we're going to focus on in this video. We're gonna start by looking at the roles that RNA plays in the cell and this notion of a gene. Then we're gonna look at an overview of transcription as a process before comparing and contrasting prokaryotic and eukaryotic transcription. So let's focus in on this role of gene expression. And in this video, we're gonna look at the first step, which is known as transcription. In transcription, we take DNA sequence information and convert it into RNA sequence information. This happens wherever the DNA is inside of cells. In eukaryotes, it'll happen in the nucleus. And in prokaryotes, it will happen in the nucleoid region of the cytoplasm. Let's talk first about what RNA does inside of the cell. We've already discussed the roles that DNA plays. RNA plays more varied roles inside of a cell. We're only gonna look at the three major roles that it serves. Some RNA serves to carry amino acid sequence information from DNA to the ribosome. That's known as messenger RNA or mRNA. Additionally, there are RNA molecules whose responsibility is to bring specific amino acids to the ribosome as they're needed. Those are referred to as transfer RNA molecules and they're shown here in green. And then we have ribosomal RNA, which is an actual structural component of ribosomes, which are shown here in purple. Regardless of the role that RNA plays, the instructions for building a particular RNA are stored in the sequence information in DNA. So transcription is going to be needed to produce all of these different types of RNA. Since we're talking about gene expression, we need a definition of a gene. For our purposes, we're going to say that a gene is a DNA sequence that's going to be transcribed into RNA and the sequences that regulate its transcription. What I have here is a computer printout of the DNA sequence of a specific gene. I'm gonna enlarge it for our discussion here. Using our definition, the gene begins with the red sequence information at the top of the picture and ends with the red information at the bottom of the picture. This gene actually does code for the production of a protein, and the only information that's actually going to be used by the ribosome is the information that's bracketed by that blue highlighted ATG up at the top of the image and the blue highlighted TAA down at the bottom. The other information is also going to be transcribed, but it's not actually going to be translated into protein. Elements of the gene that exist prior to the start of transcription can be referred to as upstream elements. And elements that exist after the end of transcription can be referred to as downstream elements. Let's change our representation of the gene to a cartoon picture of it. What we have here are the different elements that comprise a gene represented as different colored boxes on a segment of DNA. The section that is bracketed by the two blue boxes is the part that's actually going to be transcribed, but not all of it is then going to be translated into protein. We refer to the sequence that exists before where translation begins as the five prime untranslated region. The part that actually is translated is referred to as the open reading frame. And then the sequence that follows the open reading frame, but is still transcribed is referred to as the three prime untranslated region. In addition, we have a variety of other regulatory elements that aren't even transcribed. We have a promoter, which exists immediately upstream of the gene, and we have a terminator, which tells the transcription machinery where to stop transcribing the gene, and we have additional regulatory elements that are both upstream and downstream of the gene. There are a lot of different types of regulatory elements. We're not really gonna focus on any of them except to acknowledge that they exist. Those regulatory elements that in increase the rate of transcription are generally referred to as enhancers. And those regulatory elements that decrease the rate of transcription are generally referred to as silencers. Transcription is largely controlled through the presence of transcription factors. These are proteins that are made by the cell that assemble at the promoter and allow transcription to occur. Without the presence of the required transcription factors at the promoter, transcription will not happen. These are images of four of the major transcription factors, but there are many, many more. 
The enzyme that actually transcribes a gene is known as RNA polymerase. Its function is somewhat similar to the function served by DNA polymerase in replication, except that of course RNA polymerase is going to synthesize an RNA strand from the DNA gene template. RNA polymerase is going to bind to the promoter and that's going to be controlled by the presence or absence of transcription factors. And then it's going to use the template strand of the DNA molecule to create a sequence that is identical in sequence to what the sequence of the other DNA strand in the molecule would be, which we refer to as the coding strand. Of course, it's not exactly identical because RNA replaces the thymine nucleotide that's found in DNA with the nucleotide uracil. Transcription happens in three phases. The first phase is known as initiation. We see the transcription factors are present at the promoter of this gene. And RNA polymerase can then attach to these transcription factors. During the elongation step, RNA polymerase moves along the gene and produces an RNA transcript that is complementary in sequence to the template strand of the DNA molecule. Notice that just like in DNA, the new nucleotide strand has to be made in the five prime to three prime direction. This means that the template strand of the gene always has to be the one that's in the three prime to five prime direction. During the termination step, RNA polymerase leaves the gene and the transcript is then released from the DNA template. The mechanisms by which transcription terminates are beyond the level of resolution necessary for this course. That's transcription, that's how it works. It's the first step in gene expression. But before we wrap up, let's talk about a couple of differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes in terms of the transcription process. The first main difference is where transcription occurs in the cell. Eukaryotes have a nucleus that contains the DNA, and that's where transcription will happen. In prokaryotes, the DNA is kept in a region of the cytoplasm known as the nucleoid, which is the location of transcription in prokaryotic cells. Another major difference is what happens to messenger RNAs, or RNAs that contain protein sequence information, after they're produced. Eukaryotes do extensive processing of messenger RNAs that prokaryotes do not do. This happens prior to the export of the messenger RNA from the nucleus. And there are three major modifications that we're going to look at. The first is the addition of a specialized five prime guanine triphosphate nucleotide cap at the front or the five prime end of the gene. The next is the addition of a long tail of adenine nucleotide to the three prime end of the gene. This is referred to as the poly A tail. The five prime GTP cap and the three prime poly A tail help to export the mRNA from the nucleus and contribute to how long that mRNA remains in the cytoplasm available for translation before it begins to be destroyed. The final step that occurs in eukaryotes is the removal of large segments of sequence information from the transcript and then the splicing together of the pieces that are left behind. The segments that are removed are referred to as introns. They do not contain sequence information necessary for the production of the protein that the transcript is coding for. So they have to be removed. And then the remaining segments, the exons, need to be spliced together to create the functional transcript. If you were to take an unspliced transcript and put it into a ribosome, that ribosome would make a garbage protein because those introns contain what would be the equivalent of genetic misinformation for the production of that protein. The last major difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic transcription is the coupling with translation. This can only happen in prokaryotes because the DNA is not kept in the nucleus. So as RNA polymerase produces a transcript, the ribosome can simultaneously begin translating that transcript as it is being produced. That's what we call direct coupling. Eukaryotes can't do this because the DNA is kept in the nucleus and the transcripts need to be processed before they can be exported from the nucleus and sent to the ribosome. Thanks so much for watching our video on transcription. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can describe the process of transcription as it was discussed in this video. Make sure that you can explain the sequence of elements that make up a gene and what their roles are in the overall function of that gene. Make sure that you can compare and contrast transcription in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. How are they similar? How are they different? And finally, make sure you can determine the sequence and polarity of an RNA transcript if you're given the sequence of the coding strand or the template strand of a DNA molecule. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have and then do what you need in order to get the answers to those questions. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.